Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church at Chapel Hill. So glad you're here with us today. I only have one announcement this morning, and that is the apparel sale has been reopened. So I know many of you were a little disappointed when you saw other people wearing those hoodies and uh, golf shirts and things. So you have an opportunity to order your own. It has been reopened until next Sunday, January 23rd. So you can order online. And if you want the free shipping, you can get stuff delivered to the church just like last time by using the free pickup code at checkout. So that is it in terms of announcements. Would you stand and worship with us this morning? We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors. He parted the rage and sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. for the month of January. I know that Pastor John is going to be preaching right from this verse today, so this will be very applicable. So would you say this verse with me? Here we go. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9, amen. So before we continue worshiping and Pastor John comes up and delivers a message on that verse, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank him for the opportunity to be in his house. Thank him for the opportunity to hear a message from his word. And of course, thank him for the offering. So let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we're just so grateful to be in your house, Lord. It's just, it's just odd to not be here. Um, last week we made a decision because we had 
many staff members that were feeling sick and Pastor John had to be a one-man show. So we're just so grateful to be back this week and have the praise team and be able to corporately worship you, Lord, as we're called to do in Hebrews 10, 25. And Father, we just pray that you would be in this place today, that you would bless the music, that you would bless the offering, that you would bless the message, Lord. We're here for you in this turbulent time when a lot of people don't want to go to church, they're scared, they're, they have all these conflicting feelings. Lord, we're here because we want to be strong and courageous, and we want to worship the God who died on the cross to save our wicked souls, Lord. So we pray that you would be with Pastor John as he brings the message. We pray that you would bless your people as they give, whether they drop their money in the offering plates or they give online, Lord, bless them for being obedient to your word. And Lord, we just again invite you to be a massive the most important, most significant part of this service today. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand and sing with us? I'm 
he still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. You've never failed me. And if you'll remain standing, at this time we'll dismiss our children, ages 4 to 12, to Kids Church. Ages 3 and under are dismissed to the nursery. As we just sang, we're just asking for the Lord just to do it again. He is so faithful. And I know so many of you have entered into this new year with heavy hearts and heavy burdens, and you're just praying, Lord, Lord, please move. But this week, I have just been reminded over and over again, through discouragements, through disappointments, it's so easy to focus on that. But the fact is, we serve a risen Savior, and we have the victory. Deuteronomy 24 says, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. And this morning, church, all we have to do is just let go and say, Lord, fight for me. I surrender. And even though the weapon may be formed, I know it won't prosper. And there may be darkness, but his light will still prevail. Let's sing this out. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you
Good morning, everyone. Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. And uh, it is so good and uh, wonderful and encouraging to me to see people uh, in the house of the Lord. Uh, Last Sunday was uh, an unusual Sunday, and it's still an unusual time, and that's all right. The Lord knows, and so uh, my opening challenge to you is just be faithful, stay encouraged, hold the line, and uh, we'll get through this. I was thinking about the beginning of the church, the conception of the church in Acts chapter 2, and when you look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when John the Baptist comes on the scene, and then Jesus comes on the scene, and all of these things are happening, you see this, this This congregation, masses of people, and you see Jesus speaking to 5,000 on the hillside and a few thousand over here and a few hundred over here. And then you get to the book of Acts and you go up to the upper room, the beginning of the church, 120 people. And you look at all of the buzz and all of the excitement and there were multiple times throughout church history, there were multiple times in the New Testament Jesus had a massive amount of people following him at one time, and he said, here's what you need to do. He looked at them and he said, "Uh, if you want to follow me, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He literally said that to all of these people. And the large majority of the crowd were like, what? Excuse me? Okay, I'm out. See ya. Yeah, I'm not following that. And so there are multiple times in our life and in history uh, that we'll go through times where you just seems like you take a step back. But I will assure you that God's kingdom, God's plan, God's authority, God's power hasn't changed. And so we are just going to continue to move forward, advance the kingdom, and do God's work and trust the Lord and be strong in the Lord. So, very, very thankful for this morning. Thankful to get into the book of Joshua. And in August of 2020, uh, almost seems like March 2020 was just a few days ago, doesn't it? Uh, But August of 2020, we begin a series in Joshua, and we stayed in that series through the end of October 
and we crossed the Jordan River at our 26th or at our 25th anniversary for our church. And, uh, and we paused after that momentous chapter, and then we went into a very uh, memorable election, then we got into Thanksgiving, then we got into Christmas, and when 2021 began, my plan was to, to resume the series, and uh, the Lord, uh, through many different circumstances and, and situations, led in a different way. And so, Lord willing, uh, today will be kind of a standalone message to just get us back into this scripture. And then myself and Pastor Gary, uh, we will begin to preach through this series for the coming, uh, at least the coming couple of months. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. It's just an incredible story of God advancing his people for his purpose. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. I know we just sat down a moment ago, but let's give reverence and honor to the reading of the Word of God. Please stand. Joshua chapter 1. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the U river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. That's the second time. That you may observe to do all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not Turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you, here's number three, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Let us bow in prayer. And Father, we are thankful. We are thankful for the stability of, for the security, for the sameness that your word does not change. It is just as real and just as relevant and just as mighty and just as powerful as it was when you delivered it to Joshua. It is still today. And so, Lord, I pray for your strength, your courage, your encouragement, and Lord, your power upon this place today. We have gathered in this place to advance your kingdom. And we pray, not our will but yours be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And today, Lord Jesus, give us this day our daily bread. Feed us. Feed this flock. Feed this shepherd. Feed my wife. Feed my daughter. Feed my friends. Feed, Lord, your people. And may we walk out of here with confidence, knowing that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good and faithful and that we can have, Lord, this confidence that... You are in control, and we do not have to fear. 
But Lord, we can keep our head held high, our knees bowed low, and keep our hands to the plow and be strong in the Lord and accomplish your purpose. Lord, I'm so thankful to be in your house with your people. I just ask humbly, Lord, that you would move in this place in a fresh way, in a helpful way, in a merciful way, in a strengthening way, Lord Jesus. Move today on our behalf, and we will give you all the glory, all of it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. I want to just hone in, uh, Lord willing, next Sunday we will do a, for a few minutes, we'll do a, a recap, a short summary of the chapters we've already covered. We've already been all the way up through chapter 4, and uh, we preached part of chapter 5, and so we'll get into that, and then I'll just give you, as far as I know, if the sermon goes as uh, it is on schedule for next Sunday, I'm going to be preaching on the subject of circumcision. So everyone, uh, let your interest be piqued. Uh, spread the word. Our pastor is going to be preaching on circumcision. And uh, so it ought to be uh, uh, interesting, all right? So just keep that in mind. Um, but today we're going to just hone in on this key scripture. This is a key verse in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I want you to see there's a command here. So after all of this lead up that God is talking and, and, and instructing Joshua, he gives all of this mandate, he, he lays out the mission, he gives the confidence, but then he, he just kind of he, he brings it all into a nutshell in verse 9, and he says this. Look, look at how it starts. It says, ha, he starts with a question, okay? He says, all right, I told you be, be of good courage and strength once. I doubled down on it, and I said, be, be strong and good courage twice. Now we're at verse 9, and he says, Have I not, question Joshua, have I not commanded you? And for those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, we have a mandate, a mission, the great commission. Uh, God has standards for us. He has principles, requirements, commandments that he calls us to live by. And uh, we see here this command. In World War II, General Patton, his nickname was Old Blood and Guts. <laughs> you don't really hear many nicknames like that now. You know, we've moved from Blood and Guts to the Powder Puff Girls. But uh, you... you this, this guy, this man's man, General Patton. I remember my grandfather, who was a sergeant in the Second World War. He talked with affection of General Patton. And countless times I heard Papa Whistler talk about the statement that is attributed to Patton about dog tags. And it is said that General Patton, at the peak of the battle, and as the United States was hemorrhaging losses of our men. He said, I've sent home, Patton said this, I've sent home one truckload of dog tags, and by God, I'll send home another. He had this vivacious, victorious, tenacious, dog-like tenacity to say we have been called to war, and we're going to win, no matter the cost. Could you imagine Patton addressing those 18, 19, 21-year-old boys and saying this, getting all of these thousands of troops before him and standing up there with shaking knees and saying, oh, uh, now, fellas, here's, here's what I'm going uh, to suggest to you. It's just a suggestion. You take it or leave it. Here's what I'm going to uh, uh, here's what I'm going to offer to you. I want to make a proposal to you. I want you guys to get out there and 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 take your your rifles and and your Colt 1911s and I want you to go out there and I want you to 
to, to, to try to fight these Germans. And then, boys, do the best you can. And um, Would you find courage in that? No, old blood and guts stood the boys up. And he said, quit messing around. Listen, here's the command. Get out there and fight. And if you die, so be it. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I'm your commander. I'm your general. You have been called to war. You haven't been called to basketball. You haven't been called to cricket. You haven't been called to tiddlywinks. You are at war with a fierce enemy. We are the allies. They are the axis of evil. Go out there and annihilate the enemy. And if you die, so be it. We'll take your dog tags, we'll leave one with you, and we'll mail the other one to your mama. It was a command. Men don't sign up. Women don't sign up and enter into the battle for suggestions. They will give their life and they will die for commands, for a mission for a mandate, they will respond to courage. They will respond to strength. They will respond to leadership. They do not respond to suggestions. They will die for freedom. They will die for liberty. They will give their face. They will give their right arm. They will give their legs. They will give their life for truth. And that's what God is calling you and me to do. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Listen to what it says. This is the love of God. You want to know how to define your life that you do truly love God? This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And God is commanding you today. And God is commanding me today in this day in 2022, he's giving us this command. This scripture is just as needed today as it ever was. There's a command, and now he gives a, a call. Look at verse 9. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Three times he says, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. But I want you to notice that two-letter word, be. This scripture, as impactful and mighty as it is, is more about being than it is about doing. Please hear me. This verse, this scripture, this command is more about being. Say the word being with me. Here we go. Being. This scripture is more about being than it is about doing. Look again. He says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. God is calling some of you to have a revival of be. A revival of be. And when you get the be right, then he will equip you to do. Who you are determines what you do. Who is more important than what? Who is more important than do? Gibbs came to me a few weeks ago and he said, Dad, he found a DVD in our basement and it was Batman Begins. I could get choked up just talking about the movie soundtrack. Some of the greatest music you'll ever hear in all of your long lived days. He says, Dad, can we watch Batman Begins? He's never seen it before. He's cutting out, duct taping 
cardboard to his face. He had a piece of electric tape uh, tied to his tied to the to the mask, and then on his nose, he looked like a little pig walking around our house. He's got a cape of a black trash bag. <laughs> he's jumping off the banister. It's just wonderful. And he said, Dad, can we watch Batman Begins? I said, yeah, we can watch that. So we watched it. And if you've seen that movie, Bruce Wayne gets a tongue lashing from his girlfriend, Rachel, and she says this. And when I watched it, the, the, the music is beginning to build and, and, and it, you're, you, you, they zoom in uh, close-ups of their faces and Rachel looks at Bruce Wayne and she says, Bruce, it's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. That's a great statement. And it is very wrong. That's humanism. That's Hollywood. That's man-made religion. You are what you do. We understand that there is truth to that. But the reality is, I like what Casting Crowns said better. Listen to these lines. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Wow. It's not about doing. The Christian life is first and foremost about being. And once we get the B right, then God will empower us and enable us and equip us to get the do right. When I was called to preach as a young teenager, my dad turned me on to a man named Warren Wearsby. He was a pastor, prolific Christian author, and he wrote Bible commentaries on the, the whole Bible. And I have all of them. And so Warren Wearsby has been a dear friend to me, and he's been a friend to you because... Uh, much of the preaching from Pastor Dan for the first 22 years of this church and for the past few years with myself, uh, we have been helped and encouraged and educated by this uh, humble, godly man. I want you to look at the titles of his commentaries. Every commentary starts with the word B. Genesis is entitled, Be Obedient. Exodus is Be Delivered. Joshua is Be Strong. Job is Be Patient. Proverbs is Be Wise. Galatians is Be Free. James is Be Mature. First Peter is Be Hopeful. Revelation, he entitled it, Be Victorious. It's not what you do. It's who you are underneath that defines you. And when you are defined underneath, that will equip and enable what you do. I want to just take the next few minutes we have left and talk specifically to our men. Wives, you can listen in. Uh, young people, I want you to stay engaged, but I want to talk to our men for the remainder of the service mainly. Men, our wives, our children, our friends, our co-workers, they are looking to you to be strong and courageous. Men love to do they are looking to us to be strong and courageous. There was a father 
who bragged to his son that he had cut off the tail of a man-eating lion with his pocket knife. His son, not quite impressed, asked his dad why he had not cut off the lion's head with his pocket knife. And the dad responded, well, somebody had already done that. <laughs> we men like to personify that we are strong and courageous. We like to get around our, our buddies on the golf course or on the ball field and or under the car and and as uh, Anthony Schlegel, the strength coach for Ohio State, played for the Cincinnati Bengals, stood on this stage, and big, massive man, and he said, hey, guys, let's get bumpy. You know, let's bump against one another. We like that. We like, we like outward strength. And then when we get a cold and we get sick, we shrivel up like a prune. <laughs> now, come on, Donna, be, be gracious. No, but, but our children and our wives, they want to see, they need to see, they long to see, not persona, but to see the reality of us being strong and courageous in this day, my God. Goodness, we need our men to be strong and courageous in mind and in heart and in life and in conduct. I love this statement. It is attributed to Mary Evans. Listen to what she said. It's never too late to be what you might have been. It's never too late to be what you might have been. Some of you men need a revival of B. What is Ephesians 6? That galvanizing last few verses of the victorious Christian. The victorious Christian man. What does verse 10 say? Do strength in the Lord. No. It says, be be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the evil one. We need a revival of be, men. We have a command, we have a call. Be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid. And then when we know who we are on the inside and it begins to affect and influence what we do on the outside, it gives us a, a confidence and a calm, as Pastor Gary preached a couple of Sundays ago, a confidence and a calm, and it brings to our family, to our wives, to our children, comfort to have this confidence that we are not strong in and of ourselves but we are strong in the Lord I want you to look again at verse 9 in Joshua 1 the command have I not commanded you the call be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord my God is with me wherever I go. What is that? That's confidence. Amen, Mark. That's courage. That's being strong. That's being confident. That's having this calmness that brings a comfort to my wife. That brings a confidence to my son and my daughters. That God is with us. 
He'll never leave us or forsake us. And we can be strong. We can be confident. We can be courageous. I was thinking this week about all the cancer that has come into our church over the past 26 plus years. And I was thinking of the spouses. I was thinking of Ted and Becky. Becky walking. Up. Do you remember Psalm 23 verse 4? It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear not, I will fear no evil. Why? For he is with me. Becky had confidence and calm and comfort because the Holy Spirit was with her, but so was her husband, Ted. Ted was with her through every step in that journey. My mother-in-law, I'll never forget gathering at the James and praying with Terry, and the tears started. She was strong all morning long. Not going to cry. Not going to cry. <laughs> You're going to cry. And, uh, and, and right before she got to those big metal double doors and only herself walking to have surgery, She walked through the doors because through that whole journey, old Franklin Nicholas was with her. She had the Lord, and my father-in-law was with her through that journey. Mark and Nina, you would find it quite interesting, uh, heroic, the steps that that man took to get his wife to have the procedures and the surgery that she did. We all thought that Nina was not going to make it. And there was a man who knocked down walls uh, to, to make the surgery happen. And Nina is sitting here in this sanctuary today. Why? Because Mark was with her. My sister stood up here and Led us in victory in Jesus. And she had Jesus and she had Chad with her through her cancer battles. Last year I had uh, skin cancer. And uh, it was looking funny the other day. And my wife looks at me and she said, hey, hey, hey. I said, I think I just scratched it. It's okay. But even through that, Carrie was, she was with me. John Graham. Kelsey's been with him. Steve Mathias. He has been with Lisa. Uh, Edie just recently has been with Pete. And, and through this time in history... Men, our wives, and our children need to know that first, we are with the Lord and that we are with them. We're not going anywhere because we are strong in the Lord. One more scripture. I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. This scripture has really hit me like it never has before. We love to focus on Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Starts out, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And then we get into, um, you know, where it says that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds when you are thankful and prayerful in all things. And I mean, we just preach series on Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. In verse 8, think on these things, things that are lovely and pure and honest. And, and man, just it is a power-packed little passage of Scripture. But you don't see Philippians 4, 4, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9 very often on the plaques and hanging on the walls. 
But it brings all of the first eight verses into reality. Look what it says. The Apostle Paul said this, The things that you just heard in the first eight verses, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Do you see it? They have watched this young Philippian church, these young followers of Christ, have watched a man in jail, this godly man named the Apostle Paul. He's incarcerated. He can't do much. Like he can't be out there doing ministry. But they watched this man be. And he said, what you have learned by me being, what you have received by me being, what you have heard from me being, what you have seen me being, these do it. And what will be the outcome? And the God of peace will be with you. God has enabled me to be strong in the Lord, Paul says, and the power of his might. That even as I write this in a jail cell, incarcerated, being persecuted for the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm being faithful, I'm being strong, I'm being courageous. Now, that's going to enable you through Christ's power for you to be able to do it in physical, tangible ways. You can do what I can because I have been what you have not. And so what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, go do it. And he gives this young church courage and confidence and calm and comfort to say, look, you can do it because I have been, by God's grace, faithful. And men, what are your children, what is your spouse learning, receiving, hearing, and seeing in you and me? They are desperate to see strength and courage and faithfulness. This is a special Sunday for me as a pastor and a shepherd because there is a little sheep in here that has never sat in here in this context before in all of my ministry. She is my firstborn child. Her name is Reagan Kate Wisner. She turned 13 on January 9th. And so she's out of kids' church. And she's now entering into a part of our youth group. I have a teenager. That little spot that Carrie saw in my eye, that wasn't cancer, that was stress. And uh, <laughs> I'll never forget Reagan, January 9th, 2009. It wasn't the greatest day of my life. The greatest day of my life was when I decided to be a Christ follower. The second day, best day of my life was when I decided, stood on this stage, and there was no doing at that point, but it was a commitment to be a husband. And then, as I was humming, in unconscious nervousness on January 8th as I drove my wife to uh, the hospital, Mount Carmel East, humming Hail to the Chief. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I guess because Carrie was calling the shots at that point. Uh, and a few hours later, holding that little bundle of joy and... Uh, the first time I held my, my firstborn child, Reagan. And then it was very cold, so we put her in her first little outfit. We brought her home. And then later that day, my first opportunity to sit in my house, in my home, and be 
a dad, be a father. I, there was nothing I had done at that point. It was all about being a godly man and a godly dad. So Reagan, welcome to Big Church. Welcome to the sanctuary. Regs, I'd like for you to come up here just for a moment. Uh, we had a privilege to... We had a privilege to uh, this... Friday night, we, we went out on a date. And I set the standard high. So whatever guy comes along, thinks he's going to impress this daughter of mine... He will fail. And um, now we went out and had a nice dinner. And uh, those first pictures you saw, here, here's the yesterday. Yesterday. I, I held this, this girl in my arms. The current position for... The duration of her life thus far, Regs, you just stand right here, has been this. I'm in front. I'm leading her. She's following. That's what God's called me to be and to do. So I held her in my arms, and now I'm holding her hand, and by God's grace, being a faithful, loving uh, father. Yesterday, I held her in my lap. Today, I'm holding her in my hand. Tomorrow, if the Lord prospers us and protects us, she's going to be right here. And she'll no longer be behind me. She's going to be beside me for a walk. And that's going to be a tough day, but a blessed day. And then that'll be tomorrow. And then next month, if God prospers us, I'm going to be in my 70s or 80s. And then it's going to be this. And she's going to be reaching back, holding my hand. And saying, come on, Dad. Dad, watch your attitude. Dad, straighten up. Dad, you still need to love people. Dad, you are going to do this. This... Men, hear me. When Reagan looks back 10 years from now, 15 years from now, and then in that last, those last days, when it won't be her holding my hand, but it may be her visiting a stone. And she's looking, and she's looking at a name, and she's looking at that dash that's become so popular now that represents a life on earth. Will she be able to look back to 2020 when she was 11 years old and 12 and now a teenager and be able to say, when the world was falling apart, so did my dad. He didn't trust the Lord. He was weak because he tried to be a man and he failed. Or will she be able to look and say, my dad was imperfect, impatient at times, and yet, by God's grace, didn't have much to do with my dad. But my dad was faithful. My dad was strong in the Lord. My dad was courageous. 
My dad led me. My dad led my brother. My dad led my sister. My dad led my mom. My dad led this flock with strength and courage, not of his own, but of the Lord. And when my time to hand this girl off, what would she have learned and received and heard and seen in me? That's what she's going to do. I would not blink, and I'm not trying to sound manly. I mean this. I would not, I, it would not take thought for me to give my life for this treasure. I would do it without hesitation, without procrastination. That's not the challenge. The challenge that is hard is that I live a life that pleases God. We all like to talk about, I'd die for you. Well, that, that could happen. But what this girl needs is she needs a dad who will live for God. That like Enoch in Hebrews, Enoch had this testimony. He pleased God. I'm not really interested in pleasing these teens over here. Reagan knows good and well. I'm not really interested a lot of times in pleasing her. <laughs> this girl is a delight. She is a treasure. I'm looking at who we have. I was going to make some snide comment. I think we've got some good candidates, Reagan. We do. You know why? Because we have fathers in this church who are striving to be men of God. I'm not here to browbeat you guys. I'm here to tell you I love you. Join. Join arms. Be men of courage. Be men of strength. Be husbands of faithfulness. Man, I love you. I bless you. Hmm. Give Reagan a hand. Isn't it great to have her in here? This statement uh, blew Josh Jackson and I away on Friday. From Crawford Loritz, he said this, At birth, we look like our parents. At death, we look like our decisions. At birth, we look like our parents. At death, we look like our decisions. Men, I want to strive to be faithful and encourage you and challenge you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be uh, afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go and all of God's people said, Amen. I want to play a song for you and then we're going to close with uh, an invitation. You can even, if you need to come, you can come while this song is playing. It's an old school song. And I want you men to listen to it. And maybe while you're listening to it, you want to grab your wife's hand or your son's hand or your daughter's hand and just pray with them. But I want you to listen to this song about leading as men of God. I'd like to begin this series by singing together with our praise team, singing for our families, singing for our children singing for this church. The Lord bless you and keep you. And that's my heart for my daughter, my daughters, my son, that they will see in us fathers strength and courage and that we will be obedient to the Lord in this season. Would you stand and let's sing this together. Just you. 
Folks, we have nothing to fear because Jesus is with us. Amen. 
We love you guys. Have a blessed Sunday. The Lord bless you. Keep you. May His face shine upon you. Be strong in the Lord. Be courageous. Shine His light. Walk in the light. Walk in the Spirit, not in your flesh. And uh, He's going to bless us and use us. Amen. We love you guys. You're just blessed.